Alright, so we're going to start coding here. And we're going to start by creating this .htaccess file with deny from all. You might already have done this after the first video. That's all there is to it. You should understand now what it does. So we're just going to close it and never touch it again. In this video we're going to work with config.php and init.php. Now, as I mentioned, config.php is used to define configuration variables. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're going to do it within an array. So we're going to say config, then db host equals localhost. This is pretty much always localhost. So you can probably use that. Then we'll use db user. And in my case, that's root, but this can be different for, uh, for you. Then we have the password, which is nothing for me. If you're not developing locally, I definitely recommend using a password. Then we have the database name, which was blog. Now I'm going to show you a little technique that I like to use, which is using a for each loop to loop over the config array and then define constants based on the variable or on the array keys and values. Why? Constants are a lot easier and cleaner to use within your code, but arrays are easier to modify. I hope that made sense. Here you just need to go here and you can change it to a username. If you were defining one, you would you would define db user to username and you would have to search through possibly a long list of definitions and then go in the function and modify it and this is just a lot cleaner and well you definitely don't need to do this but I do like doing it. Without further ado what you do is for each config Remember, we called the array config as k, which stands for key, and then v for value. So what we do is we define a constant. And constant names are pretty much always uppercase. So we are going to use string to upper, which simply converts uh, strings to full uppercase and we're going to use the key so now we are defining um, a variable db host db user and so forth and we're going to define it as the value oops so db host now has a value of localhost it's very simple but very effective and that's all there is to the config file. Now, in more complicated examples, you could add like um, a site name or um, a, or a base URL or something. But this is a small project. The focus is on MySQL. I'm not going to bother with anything other than this. So, init.php, as I mentioned, um, this does things like set up a database connection, starts uh, sessions, and such things. So, to connect to the database, we obviously need these database credentials. So, we need to include config php and now we have access to all these four constants we just defined using this so what we're going to do is we're going to say mysql connect db host db user 
and db pass. So essentially what we're doing here is MySQL connect localhost root and nothing. This process by the way is called don't repeat yourself. It's an important programming concept and here it's not so apparent. Don't really know how to say that but this is a great um, aspect or concept to utilize in your projects. Anyway, moving on, MySQL select db, db name. And that's all there is to that. We just set up our connection to the database. Now all we need to do is include the block functionality which we store in the functions folder in the block.php file. And in this case the init file is very small but this is all there is to it. It's very simple but by including just this page or this file on every page you just made your life a lot easier than if you would do this every single time. Okay, so only about six minutes through. Let's see what we can still do. Hmm. Let's go into blog.php and I'm going to define some functions that we will be using. We're going to have a function called add post which adds a title, of course the contents and um, a category. We'll also have a function to edit posts, gets the same parameters. We will be adding categories Whoops, add category and the name. We'll have a function to delete things and we're going to give this a field parameter and an ID parameter. Then let's see. A get posts functions which has uh, an ID equals null and get ID equals null. I'll cover what this all means later. I'm just defining the functions now. We'll also have a function called get categories, which has no parameters. And that looks just about fine to me. So I'm going to leave you with just this and in the next part we're going to start and hopefully immediately finish adding categories which is the simplest task to do probably and also the first one because we cannot store posts if we do not have categories. So, see you in the next part.